welcome to this video presentation of our paper detecting covert crypto mining using HPC. I Ankit Gangwal on behalf of all the authors will present to you our work. This is the agenda of the presentation. Let's begin with a quick introduction. Cryptocurrencies are virtually existing digital assets. They are based on cryptography and one of the most popular example of cryptocurrencies is Bitcoin. Cryptocurrencies are decentralized systems. They employ a distributed ledger technology called blockchain. In the general context of cryptocurrencies, new blocks of transactions are generated via a process called crypto mining. And the nodes that participate in this mining process are called crypto miners. After the success of the Bitcoin, several other cryptocurrencies were introduced to the market. And these alternative cryptocurrencies are called altcoins. Cyber criminals, as you might be aware, have exploited the anonymity or the pseudo anonymity offered by the cryptocurrencies for a variety of illegal activities, including money laundering, terror financing, ransomware attacks, cyber attacks, etc. Crypto mining, which is a fundamental operation associated with cryptocurrencies, has very high operating cost for electricity, for running the hardware and for the cooling facilities. Of course, it can be very lucrative if you do it with some stolen resource. Unauthorized crypto miners, which are generally called crypto jackets, they tend to exploit the resources of the victim's computer to mine cryptocurrencies. The aim is to get financial gains and the victim has financial losses in terms of the electricity cost. On the other hand, new cryptocurrencies emerge every day and the available solution, they either focus on a particular type or particular form of the cryptocurrencies. Crypto jackers spread via a variety of channels. They can come as malware or malicious browser extension, etc. etc. To spread, they exploit vulnerabilities, compromise third party plugins, they maneuver con misconfigurations on the servers, and so on. And finally, when they come in a system, they also try to evade the detection by popping under the windows to keep the mining process running or they even halt the execution when the victim tries to open the task manager to see what's happening in his or her system. In fact, crypto jacking attacks exceeded the ransomware attacks in 2018 and it is an estimated, uh, it is an estimate that uh, five times more systems were affected by crypto jackers as compared to the ransomware. Several studies also show that the end users like me and you with laptops and desktops form a very large group of crypto jacking victims. The authors in the citation number 27, they estimated that a website with just 10 million users per month was making around $1.7 million a month. And in their study, they consider other website with many times more users than, than the number showed on the screen. This is just to give you an idea about the scale of this problem. F even going further, unethical, unethical mining has lured even noble members of our society. It has attracted all of us, most of us, from students to teachers, from government employees to corporate employees, researchers, even scientists, which is a very sad thing to to observe nevertheless to conclude we can say that crypto jacking is a real and a growing problem so let's see uh, what do we propose to tackle this problem in our proposal in our paper we propose a solution that is based on hardware performance counter you can see this solution as a regular antivirus solution. If you give it root permission, it will be able to detect the root or the processes with the root uh, permission and which are also mining. And if you don't give it a root permission, then it can detect non-root miners. Hardware performance counters are special registers in the modern processors. They measure hardware events. And they are often used to conduct low level process analysis, low level performance analysis and system tuning. 
they also have very low performance overhead which makes them suitable for latency sensor tech systems we focus on the mining algorithms because unlike cryptocurrencies mining algorithms are limited in numbers and due to their underlying design some mining algorithms are processor oriented while some are memory oriented hence as an effect when they execute they affect some of the hardware events more as compared to the others for example xmr the line for the xmr is very consistent in case of l1 d cache load misses but when you look at the line for xmr here in case of number of instruction is fluctuating a lot which means it is affecting number of instruction it is the event responsible for uh, number of instruction more as compared to l1 d cache load misses we use hpc to create the signatures using the relevant events for a given algorithm in total we use 28 events which are shown on the screen and then we use random forest and support vector machine for classifying the signatures in our evaluation setting we consider all the cryptocurrencies supported by the top 10 mining pool in this table you can see the cryptocurrencies their mining algorithms and the cpu miner that we use in our experiments we only considered one cryptocurrency per one per mining algorithm because we focus on mining algorithms and one more thing is that the sia coin miner was not working at the time of our experiment so we replaced it with quark which is a more which has a more complex mining algorithm as compared to any of the other mining algorithm shown on the screen as a proof of concept implementation we only consider the cpu based miners because every computer has at least one cpu which the cyber criminals can exploit for mining for the negative classes that is the non mining task we selected equal number of user tasks which were medium to high resource intensive tasks for example uh, skype video calls uh, 3d rendering etc to sum up uh, our database uh, we have two tasks in our system in our consideration that is mining and non mining and we had 11 sub classes per task like 11 mining task 11 non mining task and for each task we had 50 samples per sub class and in total we have 550 samples per task in our experiments we used perf tool to record those 28 events that we uh, mentioned before and to create a per process profile we use the pid because perf tool allows you to use pid to create per process profile the length of the sample was 30 seconds at 10 hertz which means we are recording 300 readings of 28 events for every sample in the feature engineering task we considered we computed 12 data and distribution dependent statistical function after computing these statistical function we get a single row of 336 data points for a sample because uh, it, it is 12 features per, uh, 20, per 28 events and those uh, statical function are also shown on the table below and then to compute the to select the features we use the importance of the feature using the forest of trees for the split we did 90 10 percent started stratified partitioning of our data set and we also use stratified five-fold cross validation in each experiment and we report the result for the 10 runs because 90 10 stratified split gives you 10 runs and the notation that we use is mean plus minus margin of error which is shown by viscous in the graphs wherever applicable with 95 percent confidence interval and we use two different laptops s1 and s2 in our experiment to validate our results in the evaluation we did a series of experiments the first one is binary classification the idea here is to classify a given sample and to find if it's a mining sample if, if it's a sample for a mining task or non-mining task as you can see on the screen on both s1 and s2 both rf and svm gave us very good results 
of course uh, the minute variation between RF and SVM on a given system could be due to the fact that could be due to the fact how uh, these classifier handle uh, the noise and outliers moreover the minute difference in the variation for a given classifier across different system like here like RF on S1 and RF on S2 could be due to the distinct data set collected on distinct system and the data stratification but uh, the bottom line is our approach and both these uh, RF and SVM were able to give us very high and very good results next we did another experiment called currency classification the idea was to understand the difficulty of distinguishing uh, among cryptocurrencies so the input so we only kept the mining samples in the input data set and as we mentioned before that each mining algorithm has a very distinct execution pattern on the hardware we were able to almost perfectly classify these samples against each other uh, which is also shown in uh, in the confusion metrics for both s1 and s2 on the screen which is fine with just some error around DCR and LTC uh, next we performed an experiment called unseen minor program classification the idea or the gist of this experiment is that you might have a training set from a given minor program but there are other minor programs available so what happens when you get a sample a test sample from a minor program that you did not consider in the training so to in this experiment we considered two additional minors two additional minor program for BTC and the notation A subscript B means training uh, with uh, samples from A and testing with samples uh, with, uh, with samples from B again we are just considering two different minor programs one for training and one for testing but it is important to note that the underlying mining algorithm remains the same be it uh, for any any given currency so as you can see in the results in the table for both the system it did not make any uh, big difference in terms of result because uh, when we use sample from one system to train our system it had the same underlying mining algorithm as in the case of the test samples so that's why it did not create any big difference next we also try to do a cross-platform classification which means that what happens when we try to classify samples from a given platform or a given laptop and use a training from another uh, training from one laptop and testing from another lap samples from another laptop to do so we considered and we take two distinct uh, laptops called s1 prime and s2 prime s1 prime uh, is identical to s1 and s2 prime is identical to s2 when we try to do training on s1 and try to classify sample from s2 or s2 prime it was a natural failure because both the system ha are different and hence the samples do not uh, comply with, e with each other and similarly for S2 when we try to do training training set from S2 and testing set from S1 and S2 next we also try to understand the understand the minimum length of the sample required for a good classification uh, result as you can see here even with a sample as low as 5 seconds we were able to achieve, we were able to achieve good results for feature relevance the idea here is to estimate the worst case scenario in case of the features that we compute to do so we sorted the features according to the ascending we, we, we sorted the features in the ascending order of their importance and you can see with just 40 percent worst case features we were able to we were able to achieve good results so this is just we sorted them in ascending order to showcase the worst case scenario 
the potential limitation of our work of course scalability is an issue but uh, because we need a profile from every processor available in the market it could be seen as a potential limitation but we have to consider that once we are we we do profiling for a given processor there are only a lum limited number of cpus which are released from time to time so keeping up to date this database is not very difficult of course as we mentioned before we we have honestly we have honestly identified as a potential limitation of our work next is a zero day attack what could be a zero day attack a new cryptocurrency comes in the market and there could be two scenario either it uses an existing algorithm which is not an issue for us but it could also be possible that it uses a completely new algorithm that could be seen as a limitation but there is something more than that when a new currency comes and it uses a completely new algorithm by the time it becomes mineable or by the time it gains a reputation we will have sufficient time to understand and to read this algorithm and to profile it for in our system but even if we don't consider that by the time an algorithm is accepted by i mean if a currency tries to use a completely new algorithm it needs to get the validation from the research community which means it will give us the time to do the to do the training or to do the profiling for our system of course this could be this could be uh, seen as a limitation because sometimes a cryptocurrency comes and maybe they don't disclose it and somehow they get uh, they they become very popular without disclosing the details but this is very hypothetical situation and we still outline it as a limitation of our approach another question could be how do we select the processes as we mentioned before we require per process or per program based recording of hpc and perf tool allows us to do it for every pid for a real real case scenario what we suggest is that we do an initial sorting of the processes which are running in the system according to their resources is according to their resource usages and since we only need 5 second long samples we can start with the most resource consuming process take 5 second sample and classify it in our in our in our methodology finally the restricted mining could be seen as a limitation so what happens in restricted mining is that the miner tries to do either no operations or tries to perform arbitrary operation while performing the mining in this scenario our signature based detection scheme fails because it's an inherent problem when you when when the miner is intentionally deviating the signature of of the execution but if you look at it to do no operations or to perform arbitrary operation during the mining the miner is also losing the cpu cycles which means he is also losing the the benefit it could have gained so at the at the time we are not gaining it we are not detecting it but he is also or she is also uh, losing the 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 main uh, benefit of mining but of course it can be seen as a limitation finally uh, we would like to highlight the future potential future works of our of our paper we believe that our approach is also valid to distinguish gpu based miners because like cpus gpus also have specialized tools for profiling for example amy prof is a tool for nvidia gpus and there are also very specific and dedicated events that can assist to create unique signature for gpus moreover we are working on a desktop application that we hope to release very soon for the run time identification of cryptojacking thank you so much